Today, I'm gonna show you how to create a seamless video loop, perfect for social media, and you'll be surprised just how easy it actually is. Here at Motion Array, we've been posting a lot more videos on social media, especially a lot of video loops that end and then start again flawlessly. It's kind of a cool effect, but it's also got a real world purpose because anytime that you're trying to grow a social media presence, things like audience retention and time spent viewing your video is really important. So I'm gonna be showing you a couple tricks in Premiere Pro to help take your videos and turn them into a seamless video loop. And if you're using a different piece of software than Premiere, don't worry, these concepts are actually universal. You'll probably just have to press a few different buttons than I do along the way. And you might be happy to hear that you don't need to plan this all in advance in order to make it happen. I mean, if you're creating something like a complex quick change clothing loop, then yeah, you'll probably have to plan that out in advance. But if you're just trying to take your existing edit and give it the ability to loop infinitely, it's actually all done in editing. But if you're only interested in just looping a single piece of video footage, you can skip to this time code right here. Once you have a version of your video edited, you'll need to make sure that there's two things that don't give away the repeat, your audio and your video. And both of these have a similar method to looping, so let's start with video. In order to create the illusion of a loop, you might think that you need to film in a unique way. And if you're doing a one take of a single video, then yeah, maybe you do. But if you're like me with just an edit that you wanna loop back to the start, the first step is just to decide where the end of the video actually is. I have an audio cue here which wraps up the end of the video and I want it to start looping back again right about here. So let's make a mark with our out point by placing your playhead here and then hitting the O key. Next, all you have to do is take the very first clip of your video footage and copy it by holding Alt or Option and clicking and dragging to the end of your timeline. Place it directly on the right of this out point here. And if you have your snapping on, shortcut key S, you can see exactly when it's perfect. You want the start of this clip to remain unchanged and to be directly to the right of the out point like this. With your clip set up like that, now you can drag it backwards to fill in the empty space here. The only thing you need to do is make sure that you actually have a little bit of extra space before where your clip originally started at the beginning. And because we took the beginning clip from exactly where it started, if we snip off this end here, as long as we have it perfectly end at the out point here, we'll see a perfect loop. And we can check this by clicking the looping icon here. And if you don't see this, you can go under your buttons feature here and drag it in here. Click it so that it's blue. And now when we play back our footage, we can see that it loops seamlessly with the beginning. Now all we have to do is make sure that our audio is looping too, only this one might be a little bit more challenging. If you have a song that's playing underneath the background, you're just gonna do the same thing. Copy by holding Alt or Option and dragging it to the end and lining it up immediately on the right of the out point. Then drag it backwards. But because there's probably not gonna be empty space here, you can actually hit the N key for the rolling edit tool. Then click on the cutting point between these two portions of the music and you can drag this cutting point backwards in time. This will keep the looping point exactly where it needs to be. Chop off the excess here and we have a seamless loop like with the video, only there is a problem. The cut point here might sound terrible depending on where it is in the song. So this is where you can use the rolling edit tool again to try and find the best cutting point in the music. If you're still having trouble, what can help is adding a constant power audio transition to smooth out the difference between them. Something like even four frames of audio transition will help to make it not as jarring, getting rid of that audio hiccup you might be used to hearing if the audio is cut poorly. And if you're still having trouble finding a good place to hide that audio transition, a great place to start looking would be where the narrator is speaking really loud or the music is incredibly quiet. Or you could look for areas where the beat is syncopated or not perfectly on time or doing something kind of crazy and interesting. Basically finding a spot where you can't really tell if it's the cut or if it's intentionally what the music is doing. Once you've found that spot to blend in your audio, your whole project should loop flawlessly. Now, I'm assuming that you're posting to a location where the looping happens automatically. Places like Instagram, YouTube Shorts, and even TikTok are prime examples. But if that's not the case for you and you're actually gonna wanna try to recreate this effect manually, you can simply highlight your whole project with Control or Command A, and then copy it with Control or Command C. Then butt your playhead up to the very end of your sequence and paste it with Control or Command V. Keep hitting it for as long as you want this loop to last for. But if you're looking for how you can create an infinite loop for just a single video clip, we actually already did a tutorial on it. Believe it or not, it's one of the very first tutorials I ever did here at Motion Array almost five years ago. But I think I can actually do a way better job than I did in that video. So I'm gonna give you a basic rundown of the information from that video, but also a bunch of other ideas in case that's not giving you the results that you want. The classic example for how to do this would be to cut your clip somewhere in the middle and then bring the first portion to the end and place these two right up against each other. Splice off some of the excess from each of these middle portions here, and then make sure that these clips are placed right up against each other. Now you can add a cross dissolve effect. 
What this does now is effectively starts the clip in the middle and where the beginnings and ends meet, it blends them together. And because we have our looping feature turned on here, you can see that in this shot, it's pretty hard to see exactly where that point is because the cutting point flows together with a cross dissolve. Now you can either copy and paste this section to make an endless loop yourself or post it to social media where the looping is done automatically. But a little bit of a caveat here, this method requires two things to be true. One is that your footage was shot on a tripod and two is that it's actually a really still scene or it's incredibly chaotic. You can see that in this example time-lapse, we have both, but they're separated so that the stationary stuff is stationary and the chaotic stuff is chaotic. Another great example of this is time-lapses of cars. And here we actually have a different option, which is to just find a good cutting point. And you may not have realized this yet, but the footage that you're seeing right now is actually already looped three times. Four, five. Just because of the way this was shot on a tripod and the rapidness of the motion lends itself to not being able to distinguish exactly where the cut took place. So you might even find that a harsh cut can get the result that you're looking for depending on your footage. But if both of these methods are not working for you, let's say for example that your shot has camera motion, my suggestion would be to look to see if there's anything that stands out that would look terrible if it was played backwards. This would include people walking or if there's a clock clearly moving in one direction in the shot, stuff like that. If not, then what you can try is to take that entire video clip and duplicate it the same way as before, except this time right click on the second clip and select speed duration and then reverse the clip by pressing this button here. The result is that your clip now plays backwards, but by putting it right up against the previous clip, you actually create a situation where the start of the new clip perfectly matches the end of the previous one. This means that as long as the start and end are not too jarring, you have a loop where you can never really tell where it starts and ends. And if you find yourself actually filming the footage to begin with, then you can rely on other methods like hiding the cut during motion. I've shown you before how to use a whip pan to effectively cut between two different clips. And we also have whip pan style transitions here at Motion Array that you can just drag and drop in between your footage. Similar to the cross dissolve, you're hiding the cutting point by using a transition. Only the main difference is that with the cross dissolve, you're trying to make it look like nothing is happening. Whereas a whip pan style transition is intentionally trying to make things look chaotic. So by cutting our footage in the middle and placing the first one at the end, like we were setting up before for the cross dissolve, we can actually add in one of these whip pan style transitions and even though now we can see a clear distinctive change in the scene, we still don't see exactly where the cutting point is, which can help you as a last ditch effort in case your footage is having trouble looping naturally. In cases like this, people will know that it's actually looping, but there's no one point that they can point to to say where that's the cutting point, so the effect actually remains intact. So guys, that's how you create a seamless video loop inside of Premiere Pro and some strategies to help get exactly the look that you're going for. Like I mentioned before, we do have whip pan style transitions to help you get that effect. And I'm also gonna link all of the stock footage that we used in this tutorial. But guys, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.